I think the most important thing is that we as a socialist party say that we're not going to try and tell uh, trade unionists or any other workers how to organise their own struggle. Uh, and we make this very clear that we're not going to try and take over unions or form any organisational links or do anything as a party. That the only effect we will have on unions as a party is hopefully to fill them with socialists uh, as we persuade people to become uh, socialists. Because there's nothing that aggravates people more than Toy Town Trots taking over their union branch and trying to use its funds to pay the groceries for their local demonstration squad or whatever it is that they're trying to do this week, Molly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, so that, that, and, and also to try and take over our union branches so that because the, 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 sec the, the if you branch secretary is therefore obliged under discipline of that organisation uh, to do what it says. Um, the second point I'd make is that the job of um, trade unions fundamentally is to win. Um, I think that's the most important thing um, and if we, we, as far as I can see, we only strike when we're losing. Uh, I'd much rather win the pay rise without a strike, without a fight and get that uh, and protect and promote our, our, our members' interests than, um, again, the toy town trots who want us to strike at the top of a hat over nothing, always without regard of any tactics, consideration or anything else. They're just in love with strikes and action for its own sake and that is profoundly damaging I, I think uh, and something else that, that, that we uh, personally I argue against in my union and, I, and the third point is um, that trade unions at the present moment are characterised very largely by a standing pool of 1.5 million unemployed that hasn't gone away since 1973 and if you have any analysis it's not about whether who's in charge of the unions it's not about that they're selling us out it's that that's the fundamental fact that they're negotiating up against there's this huge pool of unemployment, and ultimately that means that they have to back down and agree a deal at some point. As long as that's going on, that's, that's going to define what our trade unions do and why they look so quiescent. Yeah, Charles, in terms of the question of taking over, I mean, yeah, I definitely take your point, and I know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, 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 you're right, it, it pisses off people a lot when Trotskyists come in and try and sort of yeah, all the unions for them. But um, I don't think as socialists or as Democrats we necessarily have to take that approach. I think it's possible to, um, to, jo to, jo yeah, to, jo to, join, to join a trade union as a socialist and to, um, to persuade trade unions and trade union members to take on more radical, um, a more radical form of organisation uh, that brings democracy back to unions and back to the, back, ultimately back to the working class. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's, that is in any way the same thing as, um, you know, this kind of Trotskyist thing of, you know, trying, trying to take over unions, personally. Um, it's, so I was just going to respond to all this, but so, so um, number two, um, so she's talking about, yes, yeah, so, 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 so kind of like winning and, and, and these gains. But I think the question is really win in what way? Um, and maybe here, I mean, I'm, I might be more of a Trotskyist than a lot of people in the party, because... I kind of never thought I'd say that. Because, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, yeah, you're right, you know, like, in, in a way, I suppose, that the role, if, if you define a trade union as being um, an organisation which, which um, negotiates on behalf of its members for a better, a better wage, a better cut of the, cut of the cake, then yeah, then, then that's, that's, that's what they should be willing to do. But if you um, uh, have an analysis of trade unions as I do, that trade unions um, can have a transformative power, that is to say that they can transform themselves into something else, and ultimately play a part in transforming society. And the question of, of how one actually wins, or what, or what counts as a win, becomes a slightly different one. You know, it might be that, um, that what I'm advocating means that um, some capitalists turn around and say, right, well, that's it, um, I'm kicking out the lot of you, you've occupied your workplace, you've gone on wild cut strike, you know, and, and, um, and, that, and that's it. But, but it might be that, that that ultimately leads to, 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 to winning for the working class, because you know, it, 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 it denormalises capitalism, it, 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 it brings into stark contrast the fact that the capital class do have all the power and that ultimately we're going to have to get rid of the capitalist class. And so I think as socialists we should be careful about not kind of um, going down this route of saying like, you know, um, the, the, the trade unions have to be practical, um, and by practical it really just means kind of like sort of play, play the game by the capitalist class's rules and, 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 and stay to this position of just kind of like, right, we'll negotiate and we'll come up with a fair day's wage. I think trade unions should obviously get as good a wage as they possibly can for their workers, but it might be that what I'm advocating is, is that workers have to, the trade unions have to do things a lot more radical than that. Um, 
lose a few battles in, in doing so, but ultimately play a part in winning the final war, which is you know work, the working class seizing the means of production and abolishing class structure, you know, abolishing capitalism. Um, and, then, and then your question of unemployment, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a bad situation for trade unions. Um, uh, the only thing I can think to do, I mean, and I think this is part of the reason why. And then you're right, uh, you know, like, um, uh, come out here, maybe point, you know, the trade unions kind of do that to some extent already. You know, Unite has like a community branch, for example, to try to um, get unemployed people in the union and stuff. I think Unite are right for doing that. Um, but I think that there's still a massive load of work that needs to be done in organisations like Unite in terms of democratising them and having them run by their members. Um, and if we could have, you know, if every unemployed person could be part of a kind of claimants union, um, branch of, of this big union that I'm talking about, and that would be that would be the best situation I think to um, you know have a sense of mutual solidarity between employed workers and unemployed workers. Because at the moment, you know, like um, a lot of employed workers obviously are kind of um, you know might have a really bad attitude towards unemployed people as they do. You know, so they think the unemployed people are the kind of parasites and the enemy, which of course we know is a load of rubbish. You know, we know what the real parasites are. But that's that's a problem. You know, the, 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 you know, so 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 employed people might think, well, stuff you. You know, if if if, if a job opportunity comes up, of course I'm going to take your job. I don't care what your union says. But if we start building a kind of class-wide trade union, then then we're actually in a better position to show solidarity between the unemployed section of the working class and the employed section of the working class. So just in terms of a practical question, if you, if you, you know, as you say, the, the trade unions getting a better price for workers from capitalism, I think there's a lot of reason why the kind of um, class-wide trade union model is something that, that we should advocate. There was someone who put up their hand when Bill put his hand up. Is Bill, was there someone in the centre who wanted to speak? Because I know that Vincent's hand went up afterwards, so if there's no one there, Vincent, then it's at the back. I did notice you. Uh, I think everybody here uh, would agree uh, with the opinion that uh, as socialists when we get into a situation in which uh, the working class uh, become more aware of what capitalism is all about and also become more aware of uh, a, a, an alternative then uh, political activity is the key activity and uh, through an organisation such as the World Socialist uh, Movement, along the revolutionary lines that uh, we are advocating, that is where, uh, uh, as far as I can see, the real uh, social uh, transformation and abolition of uh, capitalism, bringing us to socialism, will come about. Uh, but having said that, uh, obviously trade unions are important, as we've been saying uh, uh, today. And uh, the, as people uh, become more and more discontent uh, with uh, their lot under uh, capitalism and realise uh, the huge improvement uh, or transformation that socialism will bring about, uh, they're not, as I think uh, we've already said, they're not going to be prepared to wait for five years uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, another general election. And uh, there, there's going to be uh, intense political activity uh, which will uh, or, or probably transform trade unions uh, uh, hugely compared with uh, what they're like uh, uh, today. Now, whether workers, these uh, revolutionary-minded workers, eventually uh, becoming a, more, a majority or uh, approaching a level of a majority, whether they will uh, seek to transform the existing uh, trade unions that we have now and uh, uh, ignoring the demand, the reformist demands of their leaders and things like that, and taking over committees, whether they'll do that, do it that way, or whether they'll do it through uh, a single uh, union type of organisation like the IWW, will clearly be up to the people at the time who democratically size up. Uh, the situation because of, so obviously we can't really make uh, hard and fast rules all I'm really saying is that yeah but there, there's, there, there's nothing wrong and everything right in having revolutionary minded uh, trade well unions I don't, I don't like that this trade 
trade is connected with capitalism, isn't it? Uh, why not just say, uh, for our purposes, unions or oh, yeah. unions of, of, of workers? Yeah, let them uh, let, let them uh, go that way, but be under uh, no illusion about the power of the state as long as uh, the workers are not in the uh, are still in the majority. But the, the important thing for the change is, is political action. Okay. So, I think I think this is kind of this is what I'm trying to kind of critique about the uh, the SBTV thinking on this. So it's not necessarily all of the SBTV, but you know, there's there's this kind of idea, and you kind of the way you described it then, it sort of implies that there's kind of this afterthought that happens. So you have the kind of like the political thing that happens, and then there's this kind of. Um, uh, this, this, this sort of, you know, yeah, and of course, you know, when, when the political thing starts up, there will also be this, um, this kind of change in the trade union. But that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to question because I think that we need to approach it more kind of sort of dialectically or reciprocally than that, and say that yeah, sure, okay, so as, as socialist ideas develop, then um, unions will become more class-wide, will become more leaderless, will 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 be more radical in their demands and all of these things. But but it works the other way. That that the, the more that we can encourage unions. To to become leaderless and to become class-wide and to become bad in their demands, the more that we'll get socialist consciousness. And that there's this kind of to and fro between the two. And that's what I'm kind of trying to, to argue for, you know, and that, and that there's two sides to the coin um, that need to be kind of thought about here. And that there's not just kind of like, that yeah, you know, this kind of afterthought, you know, come, you know, once you've got 51% of the population that are socialist, and of course trade unions are going to change. It's uh, part of the process of getting to the 51% of, of socialists, or, you know, <coughs> hopefully, 80% or 99% socialists is, um, it, you know, in the, in the population, it, 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 it is through, it's through unions, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a dialectical thing. Sorry, yeah. From the back? Yeah. I hate to say it, but the problem is, you have to ask yourself, are you the Red Conspiracy Party? Yeah? Because if you want to have... Speak up a bit. Uh, you have to ask yourself, are we the Red Conspiracy Party? The reason I say this is, if you want a political union, union it's very simple. You have a, a non-political union that is engaged in the workplace struggle, and you leave it that way. All of the members of that union can go away, sit down and have a pint, have a political discussion, and agree either to join the same party or otherwise to have the same political programme. And then, through that uh, non-political uh, format, all of those members will be expressing those kinds of demands. That is fine. We're, we're great with that. However, if you try and make the, the union one where, uh, instead of being a non-political union that could be used in that way, you're trying to put, uh, in, you're trying to put in either specific programmes or you're trying to create a manner whereby uh, rad, uh, what we would consider radicalised uh, workers would be able to direct the activities of that trade union in a, what we call a radicalised manner. What you've actually done is exactly what the, tr the trots try to do to every single union, yeah. which is to take it over and to, u uh, to use the resources and the time of those members to those members' own detriment. <coughs> those members are not stupid. They know what's going on, and they know that basically uh, their dues are going on uh, to like paying for, uh, paying for someone else to either the time of someone who's just going to work on the Trotskyism or the actual resources that they buy themselves, you know, the paper and pens and things, are going towards other people's resources. So everyone turns around and says, why join, why join a union? It's full of trots like money. <coughs> yeah. So instead of that, what we say is that you can have a political union, but you do it honestly. You know, you say, sort of like, if, I mean, if it's just unison, yeah, and I manage to persuade everyone in our branch of unison that they should be sort of like, you know, members of the Socialist Party of Great Britain and pursue our course or whatever, then we can go off in good heart and we can do whatever it is even if it is something that you know, is not necessarily what would be good for us in the workplace struggle, uh, maybe we're on a strike to doomsday and we're doing it for the principle or something like that, at least we have done it honestly because we've, you know, we, we've engaged in that particular activity knowing everyone's position and knowing that no one's uh, trying to leave anyone about. But you know, unions aren't, aren't like that, certainly above the branch level, what you have is you have tools for leadership of, of the organisation and those are being fought over by either you know, con conserv you know, conservative, um, you know, uh, like if you're almost like right-wing Labour type uh, trade union people, and the trots coming on, and sort of like you just have that that dialectic. We need to avoid doing that. We need to be straight with our own facts. Yeah.
Yeah, well, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't know whether yeah, what you thought I would disagree with about that. Because I, I mean, for, for start, what I'm talking about is, is democracy, and I think like, one of the hallmarks of democracy is honesty. You know, is that we kind of like, you know, we, we do it. I mean, because there's some stuff that the trots might be doing that they might actually be doing right. Okay, anyway, it might be it might be that the trots are right and that that, that we're wrong. That the trade unions can be transformative. But I don't, obviously I don't agree with the kind of Trotskyist kind of conspiracy stuff of just kind of, you know, like, sort of, um, yeah, trying to sort of infiltrate a union and then, then do it. So that, that's based on a kind of hierarchical model of thinking, model of working. What we in the SPGP have in common with um, organisations like the IWW is that we don't believe in that sort of thing, is that we believe in democracy. And I think part of democracy is, is, is kind of honesty, is that we go in and we talk as kind of equals on a horizontal level to our fellow workers and we say, look, this is the position we're in. Um, this is um, what, 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 what we think is that we need to take power back from those people. Because you know, nothing, nothing's going to take power back from the Trotskyists better than us, us getting rid of the concept of leadership in trade unions, of having withdrawable delegates, of having all this sort of stuff that we organise in our own party. I think we should be advocating to transpose kind of more explicitly into the trade union movement. And we should, yeah, we should be honest about why we want that. We should say because, you know, we, we, we think that it's going to help to build a moneyless, stateless society, and they might think you're a bit nuts, but they're going to think we're nuts anyway, you know, and we're going to have to talk to them. And I think that one of the ways that we can do that is, yeah, do <laughs> that. So, so, all, sorry, come back. so all you're saying is that we should join trade unions and have political discussions when we're there? Well, no, 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 I'm saying the trade unions should, we, we should play a part in transforming the trade union movement into, into a class-wide trade union movement, into a leaderless organisation. And it seems to me like you're saying that that's, kind of Trotskyism, but to me it's the absolute opposite of Trotskyism. If what we're talking about is a class-wide trade unionism, um, a leaderless organisation, full democracy amongst all the members, um, and, 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 you know, a kind of big, like, you know, piss off to the leaders, then whether the leaders are conservative um, Labour Party types, or whether they're, you know, um, god-awful Trotskyist authoritarians, um, either way, that, 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 that's, that, you know, that we get rid of them. The best, way, the best way, I would say, of getting rid of them, the best, best way of um, of dealing with bad leaders and the socialist parties, we say this all the time anyway. The best way of dealing with bad leaders is just to not have any leaders at all. You know, you can't. You know, if you, if, if you have a structure in the union in which um, people can can take 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 power, then yeah, you're always going to be at the kind of whim of, of Trotskyists. And I'm certainly not advocating that members of the SPGB should try try and apply for positions of leadership in the union. I'm just saying that as members of the SPGB, we should. Um, seriously consider democratising trade unions and not just democratising them because it puts them in a better bargaining position and because it's better for the working class within capitalism and all that sort of stuff, which um, I think a lot of people in the party do, but also because I think that ultimately it can have a transformative power. We well, disagree, yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah, I think Last in regular employment, I was a member of the union, uh, but now I don't have any contact with, with, with the union. I mean, it's a it's a laudable aim, you know, to have, uh, have, 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 have socialist uh, trade unions without leaders. But you know, the, the, what, I, what I'd like some idea on is the kind of method for achieving that. How are we going to go about it? How are we going to deploy our resources in getting there? Uh, and then once we know that, then we can you know work out whether it's a worthwhile pro 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 project or not. Well, you know, how much success is likely to have. Uh, I think the only real way to, to honestly transform a trade union is to just gather in more socialists so that they become a bigger percentage of the trade unions and have more say. Yeah. Well, well I, I agree with that. That would be the perfect way of doing it, you know. Obviously, you know, if it goes that way, then that's great. You know, if, it, if we end up, you know, if we kind of in the realm of ideas can persuade a lot of people to be socialists and then join these unions and transform the union and then it goes that way then that's brilliant. What I'm saying is that we should explore though that it might not go that way and that one of the ways that it doesn't go that way is that if, if we can do, if we can democratise trade unions then we can kind of empower the working class um, in such a way that might lend them to, to becoming socialists. So, it's, so this is what I mean about the kind of dialectic of it. Yeah. Well, um, my, 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 question, my question was but how do we set about it? Okay, well it, it, I think, I mean yeah, in practical terms, I think what, yeah, well, one thing we can do is just, as individual workers within trade unions, we can call for, 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 for as much democracy in those unions as possible, and we can call for the unions to organise on a class-wide basis, and we can just start basically putting 
um, the IWW point of view across, which is that there should be a class-wide, one union for workers, there should be an international trade union, and it should organise itself um, in a non-hierarchical way. And I think that's what we should do. And whether, that, you know, whether, as I say, you know, whether, the, whether Unite um, or the NUT or whatever proves to be malleable enough for us to be able to democratise the NUT, then that's, that's, that's the kind of question. Or whether, whether it proves that it can't be malleable enough and we have to join the IWW. There might be that we have to kind of dual card for a bit and persuade our fellow workers to, to join. But, you know, the, the workers that we're getting to join the IWW, they might not be socialists, but we might be able to persuade them um, of the need to get rid of leaders, for example. But they might, they might not be fully persuaded that the, the abolition of the wage system is possible. But that, to me, is, is um, a good starting point and a good foundation in terms of going the other way about it, where, you know, uh, we have a foundation within the trade union movement where they're more receptive to, to their socialist ideas within the kind of ideological frame. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think, you know, personally, yeah, I mean, when, when I first joined, joined the party, uh, Cheryl Evans, who's no longer with us, uh, in a conversation told me that knowledge was power and that uh, if he had more, more knowledge than me, then he was more powerful than me. But then if he shared the knowledge, the power of that knowledge was more than doubled. You know, some, the whole is greater than some of the part. And I think that, you know, if we're in trade unions, I mean, well, what we do, as I, as I did when I was, when I was working, if people are interested, because you can't, like, you know, you can't uh, buttonhole them. People are interested. You just give your analysis a proposition. Uh, and it's up to them, you know. So um, it, it, it's a matter of resources. You know, the more of us there are, the more of us there are in trade unions, the more, the more effect we can have on them. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I just don't see where we're going to, you know, how, how we're going to... I mean, we don't have the resources to start. And, you know... Basically, it's just getting people engaged with trade unions, and, and that's it. And just put in the case, and then, they, they, then once we put the case, honestly, then they can make. The, that's my point. Then they can make their own conclusions what to do. Just in the question of democracy, uh, in, in, in their union, <coughs> uh, the members could elect, the, the delegate, the man who would go and take up the cases as a union official <coughs> among the employers. Uh, and in the face of that, that would seem quite a democratic thing if the members are voting for the actual delegate that type of thing. And of course, uh, there was another <coughs> group in the union who obviously didn't fancy that idea. And of course, what they say is, no, no, what we need to do is get folk who are better negotiators. And the only way to get a better negotiator is to, for us to interview them and so on. And, and eventually that is the way the union turned out. That he, Anybody that gets a job in the union is obviously uh, being vetted, as it were, by the, the boys up top. Mm. And he decides uh, if he's going to be good enough. And quite obviously, he's the type of guy that's going to uh, tell them about the, uh, you know, how the Labour Party is a great thing and so on. But uh, if, you, uh, if you look at it the other way, when we did have that particular type of democracy, it still meant that the type of guy that got in <coughs> the man who was getting supported maybe by the Communist Party or the Trotskists or, or so on and, and he could obviously because they were organised enough maybe he could get their man in to be the, 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 the organiser in that area and they, well, quite, quite obviously they, now that he was there they were all talking about socialism either so the, the democracy side you know it's, it's, what democracy are we talking about <laughs> so this is where I can only get back to the idea that uh, as I've seen at the beginning, that uh, the Socialist Party uh, obviously it tells people to join the union and so on, and we're certainly not against democracy if it's going to be the type of democracy that we're thinking about and so on. But at the end of the day, you're still left with a situation about the politics of the, of the members and how the, the members' politics going to be. Well, at the moment, as I was saying before, if you're talking about occupying a factory and so on, the, the unions at the moment, because they've passed the, 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 you know, the, the redundancy payments and all the rest of it, take credit for all that sort of stuff. When it comes to a redundancy, they, they say, well, as long as there's no forced redundancies. So the door's open for them to run down the business at, at, at will. And as long as there's no force, there will well be to reach the stage where there is forced uh, situations. But under the law, because that's the law that was agreed with, that as long as the employers 
got to pay out so much, you know, according to the law, then you're going to actually be breaking the law if you, you know, if you're going to start saying we're occupying a factory or is it? Because the law states that the employer can obviously, given the circumstances, reduce his quad. Whereas, you know, if so you'd be saying, saying to them, uh, or, or that argument would say to them, okay, you occupy the factory, you're still stuck with the ones who might still think they're going to get a job and they're still, you know, they have to stay where they are. And, and of course, when their turn comes eventually, they'll still get all the benefits. But there's always that threat now where they can say to them, well, if you're not going to do that, then the redundancy payments and all that's not going to count. And you're going to be find a very difficult situation to, to you know, to, to, to even carry out that particular policy of saying no, eh, most redundancies. So I can't see other than a political understanding eh, coming from the working class. You, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do that because <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not working for us at the moment. But uh, that's the only way we can get it. Oh, it's alright, no, yeah, come on. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I suppose I'm just sort of, sorry that I'm just repeating myself, but I just kind of, I think there's, a, the, 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 as I say, there is this kind of relationship between socialist ideas and between the structure of the union and the, and the, and, and the structure of the working class. I think part, you know, I think, it's not, it's not obviously the, the only reason, there's a whole load of reasons why we don't have a socialist majority at the moment. I think a big part of it is the fact that working class activity and working class forms of, of, of self-organisation have been kind of co-opted by the ruling class and been kind of put into the Labour Party or been put into these kind of hierarchical structures. So what originally, you know, if you go back to kind of like Tolpano, it would have just been a few workers meeting up in a field and saying like, what are we going to do kind of thing, deciding amongst themselves, saying like, okay, you, you, you go ahead and go and do this or whatever, you know, just kind of deciding on a really basic level has become a kind of really hierarchical form of organisation. And obviously part of the reason that it's done that is, is ideological. And part of the reason that it's done that is it's just kind of practical, you know, if you've got a massive union, there's, I suppose, on, in some level, some sort of, you know, there's practical benefits maybe of having that hierarchical system. But what, what I'm saying is that we as socialists should be calling for the democratisation of trade unions and should be advocating class one trade unionism and should be supporting the most radical um, tactics and demands of, of unions possible. And uh, there are practical questions within that. Yeah, in capitalism, I think that you know, a lot of it, a lot of it will fail. But I think, I think that um, I, d I don't think that we should just sit and, 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 and wait for it to be the kind of outcome of the development of the political consciousness of the working class. I think that it works both ways. I think that with the development of the political consciousness of the working class, we'll see more radical trade unions. But with more radical trade unions and more power in the hands of the working class, socialist ideas will be able to develop. And that's why I think that, yeah, the party should come out more kind of explicitly in support of the um, one legalist trade union model, rather than just kind of like having this approach I think we have at the moment where we just say, well, um, you know, unions are unions, they're defensive models, do whatever you think is practical, whatever you think is best. But no actual real kind of um, uh, notion that they might be transformative and they might, there might actually be real questions of principle in the way that we organise a trade union um, as socialists um, and, and questions of, 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 of the trade unions advancing socialism. But yeah, I mean, you're right, you're, you're right that there's problems in trying to get unions to advance socialism, but then there's problems in trying to get a political party like the SPGB to advance socialism. You know, there's, there's all sorts of problems, there's all sorts of things that um, might not work about it. But um, I think then at least we'd be kind of like playing both sides of the game. Yeah, uh, come back on a, 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 a brief point about uh, the, the question of unions uh, negotiating wages. Uh, um, kind of my key point was, if you um, you have a large union with large amounts of non-socialists within it, if it starts to do anything that impairs with its ability to ne successfully negotiate wages, and say you have the minority of socialists within it calling for ever increasing occupations, what have you, if that's not winning the wages. And the non-socialists will go off, take the union away with them, and you will end up with a union. Because someone will have to always have an organisation that negotiates the wages. So you can have a revolutionary socialist uh, trade union, but if it's not negotiating the wages successfully, then a union will come back, and the non-socialists will largely staff them. And, and, the, and the, the extension of this is, I don't see a necessary correlation between trade unionism and socialist consciousness. 
I mean, no one's here calling for us to join rugby clubs and turn them into revolutionary organisations. And I just, there's just as little correlation between kicking an old spheroid around the field and negotiating wages and socialism. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, well, I, I think for starting, you're just setting up a bit of a kind of false problem there. Because I think the... It's not a kind of either or situation. If, 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 you, if, you, have, if you have radicalisation amongst, amongst a trade union, right, and if, if the trade union... Um, is organising for its workers, and if, it's, if, 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 if the demands and the political opinions of the workers um, are more radical and go beyond um, negotiating wages, and the long term the long term goal is beyond that, then it puts the actual it, it puts it in a much better position. You know, it's a bit like um, I think of an analogy here. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit like if, you know if we're kind of like bartering over something. You know, if I say to you. Um, I, I want to buy something off you, right? I want to start with the lowest price possible, right? I want to say, right, I'll, I'll buy it off you for a quid. I might know in the long run we'll probably settle for about <coughs> five quid, okay? Um, but if I, if I, if I go in um, and say, right, I'll, I'll buy it off you for five quid, then in the end it's going to come out as ten quid. So in a way, I think that, that the radicalisation of trade unions is, is, is to the practical advancement of the kind of day-to-day -day struggle for workers. And it, it's a kind of false problem you're setting up there. Because, because workers, yeah... <laughs> That's what I think. You're shaking your head. So well, well, I mean, it's a take, take my union where there's a lot of low-paid members who are extraordinarily reluctant to strike, and so therefore all that all that can happen is that the the, the, the union negotiators eventually have to settle. It's mm. remarkably difficult to get any get them into a strike at all. Mm. Uh, and as long as those sort of people remain in the majority, no matter how uh, you know an active minority might well be very active and very radical, mm. as long as the vast majority of the union are fairly sedate, then that's all the union's ever going to be able to secure. Mm. Um, and we, the, the radical minority, will have to go along with the deep, um, the non-radical majority. Well, that's true. Yeah, of course it's true. Yeah, but that's but that's that's exactly the problem. You know, like it's a kind of I think it's like the sort of basic socialist proposition as well that like you know if you own something you kind of take care of it. There. So if you actually if you own, you know if you you know in the socialist side where we actually own the means of production we own the planet we, we give a damn about it and we take care of it. At the moment the working class don't own the trade unions. The trade unions are owned by. Trotskyists on one hand, or conservatives on the other, as you say, you know, and that's that's the problem. So when we when we democratise trade unions, and when people actually feel empowered by being in a trade union, feel like their kind of opinions matter as a trade union, and feel kind of like like a human being, basically, feel feel you know that like their activity in a trade union is an unalienated form of activity, it's a kind of self affirming form of activity, then I think you will find that you, that, that you'll have a kind of less complacent working class. And at the moment, you know, I don't think it's any coincidence that. This kind of whole trade union history has found itself just completely kind of sapped up in either kind of like sort of left wing reformism or just kind of like this this kind of conservative stuff, and that and I think that's a, that's a big reason why you have complacency among the membership of trade unions. So it's kind of like I think this you know the social part is kind of right in a way that it's kind of the problem with trade unions is more you know is a reflection of the political consciousness of the working class. But I'm just saying that it kind of works both ways. The the the, the situation the, the way that the trade unions are structured. Has it has an effect on the political consciousness of the working class? So it's a kind of. But I guess we just disagree. <laughs> Excuse me, one moment, Gwen. Top, Gwen, I think you're wanted outside. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, so why you need and why not like anarcho-syndicalism? Like the like the Solidarity Federation. Because I, I'm well, I'm a member of Unison, and I'm also I go to a lot. Of, um, Salford meetings. And I know that I find the Salford meetings more of an alienated activity than I do being a member of Unison. Mm. But also, um, the Solidarity Federation wants to abolish the wages system. I mean, the ways of wanting it is very different to how socialists want it, but they've got a lot more in common. And I think, like a lot of, yeah, a lot of anarcho syndicalist groups, they, they're growing and more and more are happening in the UK. Um, so why why not that and why why um, why unions? Okay, well I suppose uh, this is a sort of question of what you mean by union, isn't it? Because a lot because obviously a lot of the stuff that Salford do I'd support and I think the social should support them, um, and that obviously isn't the SPGB stance, but that is my stance. You know I think you know like a lot of you know there's a kind of good thing about like the anarchists is that they're pretty creative when it comes to getting the job done. You know, like they go in you know they don't just kind of like. Um, just sort of go and strike and stuff. They set up picket lines that really just embarrass the employers. Or you know, yeah. if the worker doesn't get paid, for example, rather than doing the kind of classic sort 
sort of changing a new thing of like taking it to court and stuff. They just set up, you know, you know, and you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And obviously it works really, it kind of it's the tactic that works really well with restaurants and not necessarily work with factories, mm -hmm. but you know, they can Sorry, so, so you know, so, so, so a lot of what Solfed do is, is great, yeah, of course, and I've got a lot of time for Solfed, but mm -hmm. obviously I think that there's a, there's, there's a problem with um, the anarchist position when it comes to all the stuff to do with the state. So I suppose what I'm really kind of talking about is some sort of kind of hybrid approach between the SPG yeah. position and the kind of the stuff that the anarchists do. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was kind of trying to advocate, because obviously, like, unionising is um, a bit of a kind of all topic in this room at the minute, and a lot of people are, like, having a... An issue with that, but I'm and I and I love Solfed, but disagree with it on so many uh, reasons. But why not set up like a grassroots, similar? I don't know. You could call it like socialist syndicalist or something. I don't know. Instead of you know jo trying to join current unions that aren't going to have our interests at heart, and it'd be very difficult to to step up to somewhere like Unison or UNICEF or wherever and try and. Yeah. get your point across and I've, I've been in unison once and it was a really bizarre experience all the men were the, the union workers and upstairs in the offices and all the secretaries were women working for them and it was an incredibly like sexist and bizarre environment and I thought themselves they needed to join a bloody union but, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what I'm kind of advocating then is, is and I agree with you um, Kind of grassroots organisation or setting it up ourselves. I like that when you talked about that unalienated activity, like whilst you're at ASK, and that is what I think is the core thing. But then I kind of you lost me when you talked about joining current unions and and, and trying to um, advocate socialism because I just can't see that working. Okay, yeah. So well, I, think, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think you could be right about that. Too much. So, you know, as I say, it's, sort of, it's a practical question. It's not one that I've got kind of definitive answer to. I mean, the um, yeah, you know, it's a bit, it's, it's sort of similar really to the kind of like political question, you know, the, the SPGB argue that, um, you know, there's no good like trying to join the Labour Party, trying to make the Labour Party into a socialist party, the Labour Party wasn't set up to yeah. be a socialist party, it's not going to be a socialist party. It may well be that in, in the end, you know, we have to form trade unions um, all over again for ourselves and, 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 and you know, and, and enshrining them, you know, basic sort of democratic principles so that so they're run by the workers. Um, and the, the armor one. but obviously you know if you, if you just if you just sort of walk into a workplace then um, uh, you know the, the NUT might be the only option for you and I think you know that's why the IWW advocate the kind of dual card idea that you you know you join the NUT and you do all the stuff around the NUT going on strike and stuff you know obviously it's unacceptable for a worker to to scab or anything like that just because it happens to be a bourgeois trade union you know you still kind of show your solidarity with your fellow workers whilst you're in the NUT you do what you can to democratise it, but yeah, it might well be that ultimately, um, what we need is, 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 is yeah, is, is new, a whole new um, movement. Yeah. Like a bottom up kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mentioned yeah. that earlier with the housing, the social relations, tenants association. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to come back now? Oh, no, sorry. I think it was more, or was it Simon at the back again? Did you have your hand up? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My uh, ex-union sister here has uh, just articulated the party position, which is that uh, you know, if you have got you know, a group of us who are party members in the same workplace, we call a trade union. So you know, that is you know, that is the correct way to do it: to get all of those people who are also of the same political mind, and then they can they can form that uh, that workplace trade union. It would be unlikely, really, because any tra any workplace that you come to is going to have dozens of people in it you know, in order to have an effective uh, uh, bargaining unit, and most of those people will not be our party members. Yeah? So, in practice, we can't do it. In practice, as people who want to join trade unions, we join them you know, as trade unionists, and we have those arguments in the park. Yeah. Now, if we were in a situation where, uh, where there was a more, um, uh, how do I put it, a more uh, sort of like leftist, socialist, whatever, um, uh, move abroad um, uh, amongst our class, uh, with more, more sense of resistance, then you would have lots of different people with lots of different, uh, um, uh, lots of different ideas along those lines in your workplace, and you still could not form a, uh, a consistent political trade union, 
because he would always be marginalising some people who are on one side who think uh, something about syndicalism, on another side who think whatever. So there's really no point that you could actually form uh, a union that was nearly as effective as a proper um, uh, existing trade union uh, without uh, stamping on your toes before we've already got uh, whatever society we, we've been aiming for. There's no point in the middle of that that you can set up a trade union that is not, you know, uh, not hampering itself by engaging in needless political activity. Well, uh, well that's, that's not my question. Though. Why is that? Because you know, the, the early union movement wasn't affiliated to the Labour Party. It wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't, um, uh, it, you know, it was set up by workers, right? You know, workers did it. So I'm, what I'm asking is why, you know, it's not necessarily that like um, we set up like a purely socialist union. Everyone in that union is socialist. I'm just saying that we should um, have a slightly more nuanced view. It's not just that kind of like we either have this kind of like. Um, Union full of like pure socialists who just you know are members of the SPGB and advocate socialism, and as the SPGB develop, obviously this union would develop. Um, or that we have kind of like these kind of like we resign ourselves to oh, well you know it's the NUT what can you do about it um, affiliates the Labour Party blah 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 you know but we, what we what we do is we actually say like um, let's get into the get into the union movement and try and and try and try and democratize the union movement so, you know democratize it not necessarily social you know, make it to a socialist thing. But democratising, by democratising it, I think we, we're, we're going to be laying some of the foundations to create a, a class conscious, a socialist conscious working class. So it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not really like, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're right, obviously we can't have socialist trade unions until we've got socialists, but we might be able to, um, and be kind of more open to um, kind of anarcho-syndicalist ideas or um, one class trade union ideas, we might be able to start kind of radicalising trade unions um, and we might be able to start, yeah, democratising trade unions. And in democratising trade unions, we create a kind of foundation and create the kind of sense of empowerment um, and the sense of sort of community and unalienated activity that acts as a kind of a springboard for the development of socialist ideas. And it might not be enough in itself. It might be that the development of socialist ideas then come back to play on it in such a way where, you know, because there's more socialist ideas floating around, because there's more socialists that have been um, sort of radicalised through the, through the trade union activity, there's therefore more, so you know, so you have this kind of reciprocal thing going on. But I think that the problem with the party stance is that it just takes it off from one angle. It says, um, you know, once we've got socialists, then we'll have socialist trade unions. But I think that like we could, we, we might not be able to get like, full-on socialist trade unions. But if we democratise trade unions and if we organise around, um, you know, uh, you know, the three basic things, whatever I said, the way you know that like um, a union for the entire working class, um, a leaderless trade union, and a trade union that's prepared to kind of. Um, not be affiliated to board or political parties and that's prepared to make more radical demands, then, we, then we're then in a position where, you know, we're, we're, people are going to be more um, open to socialist ideas. That's, I think it's well. Did um, you, yeah, it's a Marxist stance. Did you have your hand up? And then it's you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was quite good, but I'm sorry. If I'm, sorry. I'm a member of Unison as well. And I get, there's two things that strike me. One is that when I get my ballot papers for the Union National Executive Committee, there's two candidates, two group of candidates. There's the Labour Party supporting candidates who basically don't want the Union to go on strike, just want to embarrass the Labour Party. There's the Trotskyist candidates who want, you know, for obvious, <laughs> what they want, and um, but at least they're they're willing to do something, and I'm. I usually end up. Well, it's just two, two posts. I usually end up voting for one Labour Party and one Trot. Um, and it, um, but the other thing that frustrates me is that you can't. That the men, the members don't. They won't do anything. Yeah. But once upon a blue moon, when a blue moon comes along, they do go on strike, and that's time they win it. So we go on strike for a day, and, and the bosses give in. So if we agree, we should be encouraging our fellow union members to organise their union on a non-leadership basis, and not affiliated to bourgeois parties. Whether we do that by going down the IW road or doing it, organising it within the existing unions. I think personally, <coughs> we've got the existing unions, they're big organisations. We should. Let's just try both. Um, but what I don't agree with you is trying to encourage, you know, us the workers to take, 
industrial action in order to achieve un demands which employers cannot uh, cannot make for political reasons because I think it will be a disaster. But we need to build a fish build democratic, powerful unions that, that can organise the workers democratically, where the workers have ownership of those unions and where they're capable of winning gains for our class. But the trade unions are not a political organisation in, in the sense of a revolution organisation. When we have a majority of socialists amongst the working class, well then all organisations will be revolution organisations. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well, th that's the thing, though. That's why I think kind of like begging the question. Because if you, if you say like, yeah, the, the trade unions are just this, and that's kind of all they are. And if, if socialists sort of resign themselves to saying that that's all they are, of all people, you know, but as socialists we say, right, all the trade union is, is um, you know, something that um, negotiates with, with the capitalist class and it accepts the basic propositions of capitalism, then that's all they'll ever be, you know. And that's what, that's what I think we need to change. We need to, like, and you're right, you know, like, I know it's not a kind of light thing that I'm advocating when I talk about, you know, direct action and, and workers' occupations and stuff like this. And it might, you know, we might lose and a lot of people might get arrested. But if we don't start, um, you know, trying to actually fight capitalism and denormalise capitalism on a daily basis, then it just, you know, the, the socialist movement then just gets kind of stuck at just doing this kind of like the one side of the coin type thing where we just talk about it in terms of ideas and everything's got to be kind of legal and things like that. And I think that th there's a lot to be said for for kind of radicalising stuff, you know. And if you look at, like, um, you take, like, Anarchist Spain, for example, like, like and, you know, obviously Anarchist Spain was a disaster, and a big part of the reason that Anarchist Spain was a disaster was because, um, you know, they weren't prepared to deal with the state in any, in any way. Um, but, but, but what we actually have with Anarchist Spain is um, um, an example that, that you can use. You know, when people, when people say, like, um, you know, the work is only in the production, it will never work, you know, it can never happen. With Anarchist Spain, actually, like, you can say, well, look at Anarchist Spain. Anarchist Spain, workers did do it, and it didn't, you know, collapse in on itself. So when workers do take power, it kind of, it, it proves what socialists are saying, that, that workers can take power. So the action kind of proves the, 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 the ideological message of socialism. And this is what I mean, that we should kind of like, just because we're against reformism in a kind of political sphere, and we've got to be against reformism in the political sphere, we're right to do that. It doesn't mean that um, we shouldn't be kind of open to, the, to kind of anarcho-syndicalist ideas um, in, in, in the kind of economic sphere. I'm just kind of repeating myself, so I don't, you know, I just guess you know, we just disagree. Yeah, I think uh, all the members of the uh, World Socialist Movement uh, believe in the idea of social transformation politically through uh, a, 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 a national and obviously international world socialist uh, movement. That, that's how the tra social transformation uh, uh, will take place. But uh, as far as the more I hear uh, about any references to uh, trying to uh, take over existing trade unions, in inverted commas, the more um, different uh, that is going to be for, uh, from uh, actually bringing about a socialist revolution because the existing trade union movement uh, has been absorbed uh, decades, uh, maybe a hundred years or so uh, uh, ago, by, uh, uh, by capitalism. And as I come back to the, these, uh, uh, this word trades, uh, I would suggest uh, if, if we do set up our own uh, unions, we call them something like uh, uh, socialist uh, or workers, no, workers socialist union, something like that. That's just a suggestion, obviously, that there are, there are, or, or are other alternatives. But, for, but let us not use the word trade. Now, not just because uh, capitalism is very much all about trade, but when we talk about trades in trade unions, it's divisive. We're, we're, we're talking about uh, the workers in, in a certain factory, or teachers, or librarians, or, 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 or whatever. Divisive. Uh, if we had one big union... 
uh, if we want to get, uh, if we want to supplement the uh, political side with one big uh, socialist union, uh, then uh, then that's uh, then that's uh, uh, fair enough. But um, yeah, the, 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 certainly the, the 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 important thing is to uh, to avoid um, a, a, a a situation. Uh, in which we are trying to uh, take over some uh, organisation which uh, has, has just been part of uh, uh, capitalism. Okay. So, so I, okay, so, so I agree with you on one of your points, I disagree with you on the other point then. Cause in terms of the question of trade unions, yeah, I mean, I agree, I don't think, I'm probably a bit sort of sloppy in my language, but I, I don't think that, yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not advocating for trade unions, ultimately, I'm advocating for one union, and that's not specific to a trade. And um, as I, you know, I, I believe that unions can have a transformative power, and therefore, um, yeah, the, the, the trade union is probably a bad word to use. Like that's that's not. I, I don't want to see more trade unions. I do want to see unions and unionisation of the working class. But I, yeah, I accept your distinction between trade unions and you know class-wide unions. Um, but, but in regard to your other point, um, I'd like to make a distinction between um, socialists taking over unions and what I'd call workers reclaiming unions. Because obviously, you know, I'm not I'm not advocating here kind of. Yeah, this kind of Trotsky's thing. If you go in and you kind of like try and radicalise a union by taking it over in the leadership sense, I'm just saying that as socialists, and but, but mostly not just as socialists, just as workers, right? Um, and I think one, maybe one of the problems in our thinking is that we have this kind of quite a compromised view between socialists and workers. Is that as as workers, we need to reclaim unions. We need to reclaim unions for ourselves. Original unions weren't. You know, there weren't, you know, so we can turn around to unions now and say, yeah, look, they're affiliates of the Labour Party, but unions preceded the Labour Party, and unions um, preceded the kind of conservative trade union leadership. So, so, so I think that the Socialist Party should have a kind of, um, we should have a more nuanced um, approach to unions, and we should have an order of preference for unions. We should look at unions and say, right, is this union, um, is it a class-wide trade union, is it a leaderless union, um, to what extent is it actually run by the workers? And, and, um, and, that, and that, that should be kind of like part of the key basis of, of how we assess the union. So it's more about the, the working class taking back control of the union movement. Um, and that in itself, um, because workers will be in power, and because, as I say, they'll get to experience kind of an unalienated um, form of activity and um, a, a sense of community, um, that, that, that will lend itself to socialist ideas. So it's not kind of, there's, there's quite an important distinction there, I think, between socialists taking over unions and, and what I'm advocating, which is, which is working class reclaiming the trade union movement for ourselves. Okay. <laughs> is there any short question and we'll give Johnny a rest and take a little break or do you wish to carry on he is I see no hands up John yeah tea time yeah of course yeah, yeah. Before we